Dr. Caitlin here. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about the number one location where if there is congestion, the rest of your lymphatic system is not gonna drain. I know, that sounds absolutely crazy. How can one spot cause the rest of your lymphatic fluid to become congested, stagnant, and cause a plethora of other problems? You're gonna wanna stay till the end too because I'm gonna show you ig exactly how to decongest that area to ensure that the rest of your body has the ability to drain properly. All right, before I jump into where it is, what I want you to know is our lymphatic fluid all drains to one area. Now, most of the time people are saying it drains to your heart, brush to your heart, move the fluid to your heart. That's not totally inaccurate. However, it is inaccurate in the sense that we're not actually physically moving the fluid to our heart. We actually have to move it somewhere else because where it drains is not here. We don't bring the fluid right here to our heart. Reason I say this is because eventually all of our lymphatic fluid gets returned to our circulatory system and then it goes to our heart, but it doesn't all drain directly to our heart, which is one of the reasons why people, when they first start implementing a lymphatic drainage routine, they don't see great results. And I have never not met somebody that doesn't feel better when they're implementing proper drainage. I hear all the time, I'm losing weight more effortlessly. I have better concentration, less foggy brain, better thinking. I have better digestion. My sleep is better. I have more energy. I'm less puffy. My skin looks better. I hear these things all the stinking time, which is amazing. But none of those results would happen if this one area is congested. So let's talk about it. Where does all of our lymphatic fluid drain? Well, it drains at a location called our termini. Now, when you think like termini, what the heck is termini? Termini literally just means end, right? It's the end, it's the finish. That is where all of our lymphatic fluid finishes and it gets returned back to the circulatory system. So where is that location? Well, that location is located right above our collarbones. Yep. So the first thing that you have to do is you have to be able to locate your collarbones. Now the crazy thing about this, we obviously have a right and a left, but why or how does all of our lymphatic fluid drain here? You know, our lymphatic system doesn't have a pump. How does the fluid from our fingers or our toes get all the way up here? Well, lymphatic fluid moves based on the laws, the principles of how fluid actually moves. Fluid moves from high pressure to low pressure. That's how fluid always moves. And guess what? The lowest pressure for our lymphatic fluid is above our collarbones. You can see how our collarbones are not where our heart is. And this is really one of the reasons why I do see a lot of people not getting the benefits is because if we're moving all of the lymphatic fluid to our heart, you can see how different that is. And here's the other thing. If we are congested at our termini, there's gonna be no pressure gradient. If we don't have low pressure here, we're not gonna be able to have like ultimately like that vacuum, that suction effect that happens with our lymphatic fluid or within our lymphatic system to get the fluid moving and draining. Now, something else that I think is completely wild and super interesting that I do feel most people need to know is our right side and our left side, our right termini and our left termini drain different parts of our body. That's right, they don't drain the same amount of fluid, which is why some people can actually have more congestion on one side versus the other. So let's talk about what does the right side drain, what does the left side drain, and then how can we determine whether or not we have congestion or whether or not that area is congested preventing proper lymphatic drainage. So let's talk about the right side first. I want you guys to imagine there's an invisible line that goes straight down the middle of your body, right through your nose, your mouth, your chin, all the way through your sternum, through your belly button, all the way down and splits you into a right and a left side. Now, the right side is going to drain the right side of your face. It's going to drain your right shoulder, your right whole arm, your right breast, your right rib cage, and that's gonna follow around to the back, so the back of your rib cage, to the center. All of that fluid is gonna drain into the right 
termini, so right above your right clavicle. The left side is going to drain everything else. Yeah, so it's gonna drain the left side of your face, your whole left arm, your left breast, your left rib cage, your whole abdomen below your rib cage, and both legs. Kinda wild, isn't it? So that means the left side is actually responsible for draining a whole lot more lymphatic fluid than the right side is. Kind of interesting. Now, one way that you can determine whether or not you have lymphatic congestion at your termini is to look at your collarbones. Do you have a lot of puffiness? Do you have have a lot of swelling above and below your clavicles. If you do, and this doesn't just mean weight, in larger individuals are going to have more weight distribution, absolutely. But you can absolutely feel the difference between puffy, fluid, like inflammation versus increased adipose tissue or fat cells. So if you're super puffy above your clavicles, above your collarbones, you probably would benefit from decongesting that area. Now, before I show you exactly what to do and how to do it, I want you to understand that I'm going to say different words that's going to mean the same thing. I may say open up. Now, when I say open up a lymph node area, I don't mean that we're like opening it and eventually it closes. If it does close, it's because congestion is building up in that area. So we're not actually like opening it up. Think of it like decongesting or clearing. We're clearing that lymph node or that area, we're decongesting that lymph node or that area. Just so that you don't get confused in my other videos, I use those words open, decongest, clear, interchangeably. It means the exact same thing. When things congest back up, you could technically think of it as closing, but it's not closing in the sense that you're closing a door. It's more closing in the sense that fluid can't move through. It just can't continue down that path to drain back into the circulatory system. So all of our lymphatic fluid drains right above our clavicles, our collarbones, and it returns back to the circulatory system via the subclavian veins, the left and the right, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're going to find where our location is. So my favorite way to do it, and I'm going to show you the easiest way, is to shrug your shoulders and roll them forward. What that's going to do is that's going to create a triangle. Now, you may not have as big of an indent that I do, and that's totally fine because all of our bodies are a little different, congestion, body composition, all of that. But what you should notice is when you shrug your shoulders, you should get some indent. What you're going to do is you're going to take your ring finger and your middle finger. And the reason we use these is we typically use less pressure when we use these fingers. I'm going to have you cross your hands. Reason being, it tends to be easier for most people when you cross your hands. So right side on left side, left side on right side. And what you're going to do is you're going to relax back down once you have your fingers in the supraclavicular fossa, so in those indents. What you're going to do is you're going to pump down very gently, and it's going to be one pump per second. It's slow and it's gentle. It's not a digging. We're not trying to, you know, like reach down to our first rib or anything like that. We're literally just doing it nice and slow, super gentle. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to start with 30 seconds. Reason being, if you have a lot of congestion there, it's going to take some time to get it to move. Now, when you start this, you may start to feel some drainage, like from your nose. You may get some post nasal drip. You may feel a tickle in your throat. You may feel like you need to sneeze or cough, all normal. Now, if you don't feel those, that's totally fine too. You don't have to feel those symptoms in order to know that it's working. So after you do 30 seconds, what you're going to do is you're going to be good. I'm going to recommend that when you start this, that you're going to do it every day, at least once a day, ideally twice a day, because it does take some time to get that lymphatic fluid moving, because the longer it's stagnant, the longer it's going to take to get things going and moving, because it does get really gunky and congested. If you guys like this type of information, make sure to come back, because I'm actually going to do a seven-part series. This is video one of seven on how to open up and decongest the specific seven lymph nodes that I talk about all the time. I'm going to break it down by location so that you you can know exactly how to implement this in your day to day. Thanks for being here. Happy draining. And I'll see you in the next video, video number two, for the next lymph node in the next order.